Hello guys, this is the part 2 of the tutorial for SOAP, the scriptable object architecture. In this video, we are going to focus on scriptable events. We'll first add some visual feedbacks, a VFX and a vignette when we get damaged or healed. Then we will implement getting damaged when the player collides with an enemy. And finally, we will show a game over screen when the player dies. Before we start, I will show you how to increase massively our development speed by enabling the editor play mode option. The only change I made compared to the previous video is that I moved the hellbar UI in the bottom left corner so that it's not in the way. Right now, when we hit play, we have a small delay before the game starts. This is very annoying, and we can change that by enabling the editor play mode option. To do that, we go to Edit, Project Settings, Editor, we scroll down, and enable Enter Play Mode option and Reload Scene. We can also toggle the Play Mode option by going to Tools, Soap, Toggle Fast Play Mode, or use the shortcut Ctrl plus L. A message is logged in the console to let us know if it's enabled or disabled. Let's press Play, and as you can see, it is way faster. The bigger your game gets, the more this difference will be noticeable. I have personally been using the Enter Play Mode options since it appeared in Unity 2019, and after using it, it's impossible for me to go back to the normal play mode. Okay, now we are ready to create scriptable events for when the player gets healed, damaged, and when he dies. Let's first create a subfolder and call it Events. Now, let's create our first event, Player Damaged. To do this, we right-click in the project hierarchy, then go to Create, Soap, Scriptable Events, and because we want to know how much damage was inflicted, we choose an event of type int. Let's name it event underscore on player damaged. For the player heal event, we can simply duplicate the one we just created by pressing Ctrl plus D and rename it to event on player healed. Finally, let's create the player death event. So right click, create, soap, scriptable event, and no parameters. In this case, we only care about knowing that the player has died, so we don't need to pass any arguments. All right, now let's open our health script in the code editor. Let's start by exposing references to the events we want to raise. Serialize field, private, scriptable, event, int, on player damaged. Then we can copy this line and paste it and rename it to on player healed. Finally, for the last one, serialize field, private, scriptable, event, no param, on player death. All right. Now we can start with raising on player death when we die. In our on health change method, when we take damage, we can add a check to see if we are dead. So if current health is below or equal to zero, then on player death dot raise. Done. Now if we took damage and we are not dead, then we can raise on player damaged. Just as a reminder, our variable diff is the difference between the new health value and the previous value, which in this case is the damage amount. So here our variable diff is a negative float, but we want to send a positive int. So first, we are going to use the absolute value to make it positive, and we will round it to an int. So mathf.apps, mathf.round to int, and the difference and we close all the brackets. Don't worry, this is the most math we are going to do in this video. The last one is very easy. We simply call onPlayerHealed and send the diff as an int when the player gets healed. Nice! Now our code is raising the events properly and we can go back to the editor. Now let's drag our events in our class. onPlayerDamaged, onPlayerHealed, and, oh yeah, if you don't want to drag, you can also click on the little dot on the side and search for your events in here. Then just select it to reference it. 
Now to test our events, we are going to add a VFX for when the player gets damaged or healed. To gain some time, I am going to use one of the VFX included in the SOAP package. If I search for VFX, I see that there are two, so let's pick the prefab VFX on destroy and drag it under our player. Let's break the prefab connection, remove also this script and rename it to prefab VFX damage. Now let's attach an event listener. So add component, event listener, and because our player damage has an int parameter, we need to attach an event listener int. You should always make sure to match the event listener type to the parameter type sent by your event. For the binding, we can leave it as is. Let's add an event response. And here we want to react to the on player damage event. Let's drag the particle system and then we could select the method play, but we can do something cooler. Instead, we can trigger the dynamic method emit. This method accepts the in parameter sent by our event and it will emit the same amount of particles. For the player, this will mean that the more he takes damage, the more particle will be emitted. Perfect for giving feedback when he takes a critical hit, for example. For the player heal VFX, we are going to be extremely lazy. We just duplicate the damage VFX we just made, rename it to heal, change its color to green, and then make sure our event listener listens to the on player healed event. All right, it's time to play the game and test this. Let's click on damage. And yes, we can see that it triggers our VFX. And now let's try to heal. And yeah, it works too. Awesome. Now we are ready to use events to trigger some UI elements. Let's improve our damage feedback with a damage vignette. Let's create a new panel and call it damage vignette. Let's remove the image sprite, then set its color to red and the alpha to something like 50. To do a cool fade out effect, I have already made a small script that is included in the SOAP package. Let's go to add component, fade out. This also adds automatically a canvas group. Let's set the alpha to zero as we don't want to see it when the game starts. Now we need to attach an event listener int. So add component, event listener int. Then for the response, we can add one and reference our player damage event. Now we can drag our fade out component and call the method activate. Here, we don't call a dynamic method because we don't use the in parameter of the event. Now for the heal vignette, it's very easy. We duplicate the damage vignette game object in the hierarchy, change the color of the image to green and set the event in the event listener to on player healed. That's it. Okay, let's play to try this. Let's click on take damage. Hmm, it seems we can't click on it. It's probably because the canvas groups of the vignettes are blocking our inputs. Let's fix it. To do so, we can select both game object, then disable interactable and block raycast. Let's also rename this game object to heal vignette. Now let's play and see this effect in action. Let's take damage first, and yes, we see our damage feedback, and then let's heal, and yeah, we see it as well. Awesome. Now, let's create a new panel and call it Game Over. Let's change the color of the image to black. Then let's create a new Text Mesh Pro. Let's set its anchor to fill the screen then select auto size and the max size to something like 250. Let's align the text properly and set its color to red. And finally, let's set the text to game over in capital for dramatic effect. Now we go to add component, event listener, no param. The event we want to listen to is on player death. Then for the response, we drag the panel, then go to game object, set active and set it to true. Finally, we want this panel to disable itself when the game starts. 
To do that, let's click on Disable on Start. This will make sure that the event listener subscribes to the event before disabling itself. All right, let's play, then kill the player. And yes, we can see that our game over panel appears. You can debug events when you are in play mode. If you inspect an event, you will see all the objects that are listening to it. You can click to highlight the object or click on this button to select it. Now, another very useful aspect of scriptable events is that you can trigger them in editor. Let's imagine that I want to test that my game over panel appears when the player dies. The way we tested before is that we played the game and killed my player, but I am too lazy to do that. Instead, I can play the game, select the on player death event and click on the raise button. Also, for events that have parameters, like our player damage event, I can even modify the value of the parameter and trigger it with that value. This is really useful. Now we are ready to create an enemy. To save some time, I'm going to use the enemy prefab included with SOAP. Let's search for enemy and drag the prefab into our scene. Now let's break the prefab connection and let's also remove all the script attached to the object as we are going to recreate them ourselves. Now, let's create a new script and call it enemy. Let's attach it to our enemy prefab. To detect collisions, we are going to use a trigger collider because we don't want the enemy to interfere with the movement of our player. Finally, to detect if we collided with the player, we will check the player tag. So let's already set the tag of our player to player. Now we are ready to open our enemy script in the code editor. First, let's delete everything. Then, because we use a trigger collider, we are going to use the Unity callback on trigger enter. Then, if other.comparetag player, then that means we collided with the player. Now, there are a few ways to inflict damage to the player. The traditional way would be something like this. Other get component player health dot take damage 30. This is fine, but we need to create a take damage method in our player health class. Let's do that quickly. Public void take damage int damage then inside current health dot add minus damage. This will work, but it's not that great. Firstly, we are using get component and it could have an impact on performance. So if we can avoid using it, it's always better. Secondly, this is not in line with the philosophy of SOAP. The whole point of using SOAP is for us to not have to create reference between our classes. Here, we just coupled our enemy class with our health class. In other words, we just created spaghetti code. Let's see how we can change this. Instead of doing get component and finding our player health class, we are going to modify the health variable directly. First, let's create a reference to a float variable. So, serialize field, private, float variable, player health. Then, we can simply add a value like we did before in our take damage method. This is better already, as we did not couple our classes. However, we lose some flexibility. Let's imagine we would like later to add some invincibility or resistances before applying damage to our player. So we would like to keep all that logic in the player health class. Therefore, instead of accessing directly the variable, we are going to use a scriptable event int. Let's first create a reference to this event. Serialize field, private, scriptable event int on enemy hit player. Then, we can raise it when the enemy collides with the player. We can also delete the player health variable as we are not going to use it anymore. Now we can go back to the editor. Let's create this event by duplicating an existing one and rename it to event on enemy hit player. Then we can drag it onto our enemy script. Then we go to our player, add an event listener int, add a response and listen to our new event. Finally, we call dynamically the method we created earlier, take damage. 
you can find more examples like this in the SOAP package. Under Obvious, SOAP, Examples, Scene. Each scene has a few examples and a dedicated documentation that gives a clear explanation. Don't hesitate to check them out. Awesome! Now we are ready to test this. Let's hit play, then move our player into one enemy. And yes, it works! In the next video, we will continue to build towards making a game similar to Vampire Survivor, which is a top-down roguelike. You will see that it's very easy and fast to make this type of games with soap. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below or join our Discord channel. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.